Happy Eastertide, dear ones, and welcome to Trotwood Church of the Brethren. My name is Pastor Jennifer Keeney Scar, and together we are a church celebrating diversity, strengthened by God, transformed by the Holy Spirit to serve and unify in the name of Jesus. My husband Jonathan and I returned early this week from a lovely vacation where we spent time hiking in Hawking Hills and much needed time with family in Virginia. We were very grateful um, for the time to be away. And while I was away and throughout this pandemic, your leadership team has been working tirelessly to make the best decisions for our community in regards to the ongoing pandemic. We are all grateful for your patience and compassion with us and with each other throughout these difficult months. Leadership team has now decided to begin our transition toward regathering in the sanctuary. Beginning on May 23rd, the worship service will be conducted completely from the sanctuary and will be live streamed via YouTube. Those who are not yet comfortable returning to the building are welcome to join us Sunday mornings via the live stream. And those who are comfortable returning to the building are welcome to join us in the sanctuary. Worship will look a little different from how it was before the pandemic. And some of those decisions are still being made. Leadership team will update you with those decisions soon prior to the 23rd. We are all hopeful that later in the year, as COVID cases continue to decline and as vaccinations continue to increase, our worship time together will begin to feel a bit more familiar. So mark your calendars for May 23rd. And now, let us join together in worship. Day by day, God leads us to the deep, deep pools of peace, to the green, lush lawns of grace. Day by day, Jesus calls us to pour out ourselves in service, to anoint the stranger with hope. Day by day, the Holy Spirit shows us the community we could be, the family we are called to become. Let us open our eyes and our ears to the leading of God as we listen to our prelude. We've come now to the time in our service where we share with one another our joys and our concerns. So tell us, 
Beloved of God, what is on your heart today? You're familiar with our process by now. I'm sure that this sharing can be done either with the people in the room with you in a quiet moment between you and your journal or sent in an email to pastor at trotwoodcob.com with the subject line joy or concern. Remember to indicate if we're allowed to share it and I'll send all those appropriate to share along in the community email on Tuesday. In this way, we can continue to be in constant prayerful connection with one another throughout the week. If you choose to let the video roll on by, that's just fine. I encourage you to do what feels the most supportive to you. But if you do choose to pause the video, take a moment for silence or prayer before you return. And remember to pray for all of those you cannot see, but who are also worshiping with you this very moment from the sanctuary of home or the sanctuary of a church building, together with others or gathered in spirit. Take all the time you need. I'll be here waiting for you when you get back. Will you pray with me? Loving and healing God, we turn to you in prayer, confident that you are with us and with all people in every moment. We stand before you as people of hope, trusting in your care and your love. May your faithful love support us and soothe the anxieties of our hearts. Generous God, fill us with compassion and concern for others, young and old, that we may look after one another in these challenging days. Open our hearts to one another with understanding and with love, that we may respect the various pace at which our friends, neighbors, and family will emerge from this pandemic. We pray in constant gratitude for all those in our country who are continuing to work in these days in so many fields of life for the sake of us all. O oh God of creation and life, we place ourselves in your loving arms. May the mantle of your peace enfold us this day, every day. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's Kayla and Alex, and we're so happy to be back with you this Sunday morning. We have missed um, seeing you guys virtually. So today we wanted to talk about um, all of the different ways that we can worship. So kind of asking ourselves this question, how do we worship? Because there are so, so many different ways to worship God and to show your faith. Um, so today we wanted to discuss some of these that Alex and I came up with. Um, and we want to challenge you um, to kind of uh, fill this in your own kind of way. So I'll let Alex kind of share with you what we um, came up with. All right, so we kind of made it almost like a game, Yeah, I guess you could say. So you can either think of it as a choice board or a game board or however you would like. But this is what Kayla and I came up with. 
So it is kind of like a choice board. You can also make maybe a game board. But on here, we have nine different ways that you can worship God or show God that you love him. So starting with the middle, we have your choice. So this is kind of just up to you. Um, what do you think worshiping God looks like? Um, up top, we have singing. Singing is a huge part of worshiping God. When you go to church, um, the first thing you do is you sing to God and sing about God. So that is a great way to show worship. Um, down below, we have share the words of God. So this is like when we challenge you every day to share what we're talking about. Share your story. Share the word of God to others. Um, to the right here, we have being kind. Now, this should be an everyday thing, being kind, showing people kindness. Um, that is a great way to um, worship God and to show God um, who you are and how you can be. Um, to the left, we have donate. Now, this could be donating canned goods, donating clothes to Goodwill, um, this is just kind of spreading the love. Stuff you don't really need anymore, somebody else really needs. Mm -hmm. So this is a great way to show God you love him. Um, up here we have praying. Um, this is another great way to worship God at the end of the day. Or if you are just wanting to talk to him throughout the day. Um, just saying, hey God, I'm here and I need you. That's another good way. Down below, we have Bible or spending time with your Bible. That is another good way to just kind of spend time one-on-one -on -one with God, reading about Him, and kind of doing devotionals mm -hmm. um, with Him. Um, we have community service. So we did have donate and community service. So this could be um, going and cleaning at the park, um, going to the soup kitchen with mom and dad yeah. or grandma and grandpa. Absolutely. Um, just any way you can get out and give back to your community. And then the last one is going to church, whether that be in person or watching a YouTube video or um, just spending time on Sundays one-on-one -on -one with God. So this is our choice board. We would like to challenge you to either do some of these, do all of these, if you are feeling up to it. <laughs> yes, you can also um, just make your own if you want to challenge yourself and maybe make 12 squares and fill those in. Um, if you want to make a different one every week or every month, just something to be intentional about how you worship and how you um, show God and others around you and yourself, your faith and your love for God. Yeah, and like we said, make a game out of it. Play tic-tac-toe. See which yes. one, if you could get three in a row, or even bingo type of way, yes. would be a great way to worship and show God you love him. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, on this Sunday morning, we just want to say we are so thankful and grateful for all of the different ways um, that you provide us with to worship you and spread your word and show our love for you and our faith. And we just want to say that we love you, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We will see you next week. Bye. This is how we've come to understand and experience love. Christ sacrificed his life for us. This is why we ought to live sacrificially for our fellow believers and not just be out for ourselves. If you see some brother or sister in need and have the means to do something about it, but turn a cold shoulder and do nothing, what happens to God's love? It disappears, and you made it disappear. My dear children, let's not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. This is the only way we'll know we're living truly, living in God's reality. It's also the way to shut down debilitating self-criticism, even when there is something to it. For God is greater than our worried hearts and knows more about us than we do ourselves. And friends, once that's taken care of and we're no longer accusing or condemning ourselves, we're bold and free before God. We're able to stretch our hands out and receive what we ask for because we're doing what he said, doing what pleases him. Again, this is God's command to believe in his personally named son, Jesus Christ. He told us to love each other in line with the original command. As we keep his commands, we live deeply and surely in him, and he lives in us. 
This is how we experience his deep and abiding presence in us by the spirit he gave us. In the years following the death and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, the followers of Jesus experienced a painful fracture with their fellow Jewish siblings. The primary reason for this fracture, as you might imagine, was that those who followed Jesus believed him to be the long-awaited Messiah, while the rest of the Jews did not. It was a painful time. And then in the year 70, the central gathering place for all Jews was utterly destroyed by Roman armies in a flurry of fire and swords. The perceived home of God was gone. Worship as they knew it was forever changed. The Jews, both followers of Jesus and those still awaiting a Messiah, were scattered. If there was ever a time for us to be able to empathize with these first century Jews, it's now. It was a painful time then, and we are in a painful time now. For a while, those followers of Jesus held together, bonded by the experience of exile from their religion and their home, until. There always seems to be an until. Until division came for them as well. The followers of Jesus began to battle over the person of Jesus, somewhat ironically, and the nature of salvation. They had loads of questions about Jesus and salvation. Was Jesus human? Completely? Was he divine? Completely? Was he some kind of mix of both? Um, how are we saved? They wondered. How were we saved? And when? <laughs> and they had just about as many conflicting answers to these questions as they did questions themselves. The disagreements between them, within the followers of Jesus, grew to a point of another fracture in the community. The early church was beginning to fall apart. This is the setting into which the author of 1 John writes. The author writes this letter in order to build a bridge over the forming chasm in an attempt to call the community back into some kind of unity from which they could function. Whoo, boy howdy. No easy task. The conflict in our midst today does not concern the divinity and humanity of Jesus, though such conversations are possible between us here at Trotwood Church of the Brethren. Rather, our primary conflict sits squarely on how we choose to worship in an ongoing pandemic. We've been navigating our way through these sharp caverns for over a year, steering around obstacle after obstacle, occasionally scraping a limb or two on the rocks. Our current model of Zoom worship group, YouTube worship group, and sanctuary worship groups has served us well in the midst of our varying comfort levels and differing understandings about the behavior of the pandemic. As I mentioned earlier today, leadership team has now released the date on which our worship services will cease to be shot here in my office and will instead be conducted from the sanctuary, May 23rd. This news, I'm sure, has impacted you all in different ways. For some, this news will come as long-awaited relief, a sense that some kind of normal is returning. For others, it may be accompanied by impatience and questions of why this hasn't happened sooner. For still others, this news may come with a sense of dread or social anxiety. Some of us will be grateful and joyful, others will be sad and grieving, and perhaps you are feeling something I haven't named. And that's okay too. However you are feeling, it's okay. However you are processing this news, 1 John 3, 16 to 24, which we read this morning, has a bit of a challenge and a bit of comfort for all of us. First, the challenge. Our scripture today holds the central call of this whole letter. The author calls upon the community in the midst of their division to know love by laying down their lives for one another, as Jesus did. Jesus loved them not in word or speech, but in truth and action, so they should do the same for each other. The challenge, 
Lay down your life, the author says. Love in truth and action. When I hear these words, lay down your life, I think I've most often thought about someone dying for the sake of another person, complete sacrifice for the sake of another. I mean, this phrase, lay down your life, is linked to Jesus, and he did die. So it makes sense why I've thought this way for so long. But the next verse concerns our livelihoods not our flesh and blood lives. The next verse talks about a brother or sister seeing someone in need, having the ability to help and refusing to do it. So perhaps this verse about laying down our lives isn't as much about dying for someone else as it is about caring for someone else. Jesus taught us this time and time again from gospel to gospel what it means to care for other people. And he didn't just teach it with his words. The author of 1 John says Jesus showed us how to do this with his actions, in how he healed, how he talked, who he ate with, who he used as characters in his stories, where he traveled. All of this offers us information about how to care for each other. Jesus laid down his life before us, like a bricklayer lays bricks on a path. Jesus laid down his life as a path to follow, a model for how to love in truth and action. Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. The author of 1 John is asking his community and us to contribute to that path, to lay our lives down next to the life of Jesus as a path toward loving others. Now for a story. Jill Heinerth is an expert Canadian cave diver who has spent her life exploring the depths of the earth. In the early 20 teens, Jill and two of her regular diving partners came upon the unique experience of cave diving the world's largest ever iceberg, Iceberg B-15. This berg, as they call it, was about the size of Jamaica when it first formed off the coast of Antarctica, and no one had ever dove into the caves of an iceberg like that before. Jill and her diving partners wanted to give it a go. They planned a 90-day excursion, which would allow for hundreds of one-hour dives, one hour being the amount of time the human body could safely handle the below freezing temperatures of the Antarctic water. Their first of many dives into B-15 revealed an ever-shifting, always-changing, dynamic environment full not only of ice and water currents, but of sea life. Sea lions, penguins, plant life, krill, and these little transparent fish called ice fish who burrowed into the walls. It was beautiful. It was dangerous. The currents in the iceberg were strong, like hurricane level strong. Jill and her team got caught in these, occurrence, in these currents on more than one occasion. Jill recalls the scariest experience with a current occurring when she and her team were on their way out of the iceberg at the end of one of their dives. The current picked up and soon it was too strong to swim against. You know how if you've ever swum against a curve and you're, you're a current and you're swimming really fast and it's still pushing you backwards, that's what was happening to them in this iceberg. The team, member, the team members clasped onto the ground of the cave and with arms shaking from the excursion, from, yeah, from the exertion, <laughs> pulled themselves inch by inch back toward the daylight and their exit. Soon, their journey was meant to take them up a vertical column, but the current was barreling down the column with immense force, making it nearly impossible, well, definitely impossible to swim against, but very difficult on the ice walls to pull yourself up. And Jill puts it this way, the cave was trying to keep us. She wasn't sure they were gonna make it out, and then she remembered the ice fish. 
These fish are about the size of your thumb, and they are completely transparent. Even their blood is transparent, which allows the observer to see the beat of the little critter's heart. Long ago, there was a massive drop in temperature in the Antarctic oceans, and most of the fish swam for warmer water, but not the ice fish. They stayed. They adapted. And they were familiar with these almost unbearable currents in the icebergs. And so to keep from getting swept away, these little ice fish burrowed into the ice walls. They created little outcroppings, and they sat in them and waited waited for the current to change. As Jill struggled at the bottom of this column, desperate for a way to climb out, there the ice fish were, looking at her from their little burrows, about the size of human fingers. Burrows carved out all along the way up the column, a path to follow, a way to climb. Jill alerted her teammates to this discovery and slowly, finger by finger, following the path, trying not to disturb the fish, they pulled themselves up and out of the current and back to the surface. These ice fish with their hearts on their sleeve saved the lives of the divers that the cave was trying to keep. Each little burrow was like a pocket of love and care, bringing them closer to the surface. I wonder to what extent you might feel like one of those divers right now, pressured and exhausted and frightened by the strength of what is hitting you. I wonder to what extent you might feel like one of those little fish offering kindness and love that's needed for someone else to get a little closer to the daylight. Or perhaps you felt like both at different moments in the same day. Beloved, we are all going to climb out of this pandemic at different speeds. But the climb will be easier for all of us if we can offer as much kindness and love to each other as possible as we climb. That's the challenge from our scripture today. Not only here in the space of this church community, but also in your friend groups, in your family groups, in your workplaces, and in public spaces. Love one another in truth and action by respecting the pace at which another climbs and clearly communicating your pace to others. In doing so, we may all lay down our lives alongside Jesus as a path toward deeper love for one another, even now. And so I'll end this little sermon with some comfort as we engage this hard work. The author of 1 John makes a beautiful claim about God in the midst of the challenge issued to the author's community. The author says, God is greater than our hearts, and God knows everything. Our hearts for this author are a symbol of our worry, our strife, our ego, and our pride. And so in saying this, the author is claiming that God is so much more powerful than the forces that prevent us from caring for one another. God is love, and God will carry this community through, come what may, even if you mess up, even if the current feels too strong, even if your ego gets in the way, even if you cannot see the burrows in the ice wall, even if you aren't sure at what pace you're moving out of this pandemic, God is love, and God will carry you through.
Each gift given to this church family, large and small, is received with so much celebration and gratitude, either through the mail at our church office, given digitally through our website at trotwoodcob.com, or dropped in the offering plate on the way out of the building if you're there this morning. For all of your gifts of time and talents and resources, but especially for your gift of presence here with us today, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us continue to live as a generous people whose work is inextricably linked to God's great works of creation, redemption, and empowerment. Will you pray with me? Giving God. In our worshiping, we offer ourselves as a sacrifice of praise. Receive now these gifts as symbols of our giving to you all that we are and all that we have. Use us and this offering of our material possessions in the service of your purposes and according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, beloved, our worship service together today is coming to a close, but our work as people of faith continues. I invite you to honor our continued connection to one another throughout this week by sharing in our greeting practice. You can join in this practice by simply considering someone you haven't seen in a while. How might you reach out and love that person this week? And now, as our worship service together ends and your day continues, go now with the trust in our God who is love. And let us love not just in words, but in truth and action. Go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.